Hi, and welcome to this episode that I'm going to speak about substrates. What kind of surfaces can I paint encaustic on? And, well, now you know that encaustic is beeswax. And beeswax is a little bit special. Take this painting here. I have painted several layers of beeswax on this. And if it would be paper, then if I would take it and bend the paper, then the wax could crack, snap, and then peel off. So that's why they say that encaustic must be painted on a rigid surface, something that is hard. And let me explain what those things can be. Well, this is an old painting that I made with some grass from my garden. I will show you later how you can do this. And I painted this on a simple piece of plywood from the nearest lumberyard. It's just cheap and it's great. This, my hubby, did to me really, and it was very kind of him, but the lumberyard can actually make the pieces in the sizes that you want. Just, just ask them and they will cut the pieces absolutely the sizes you want. And it's very cheap and it's very simple to use. But it's something that I have started with quite recently, uh, in my courses and that's using yeah just cardboard a piece of quite rigid and a hard cardboard you, I can hardly bend it as you see here and it works great for encaustic and I've never thought about it why doesn't people use cardboard or paper well this can be one reason right just getting my burner and you know fire and paper doesn't add up very well but it does actually because you have to have three layers of encaustic medium or encaustic color before you actually start to paint. I'm going to show you that. So it works even with cardboard and this is just great. But I would only use it for practice and for small things of course because it's really hard. What are you going to do with it if you want to frame it? So you cannot have encaustic behind glass. And why is this really? Well, I got some questions sometimes. Oh, can I really buy encaustic? Won't it melt? And I will tell them, well, encaustic, it actually has a higher melting temperature than ordinary beeswax. And it gets soft at about 60 degrees and melts at about 90 degrees Celsius, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you get that hot in a room, then you have much greater issues than what to do with your painting. So don't worry about that. But back to the cardboard. So if you're going to use paper cardboard, don't put it behind glass because behind the glass it can get pretty hot. So skip the glass part and now you know that. So use cardboard. You don't have to have that anxiety of doing really great stuff because you can just throw them away. It's cheap and you can make a lot of paintings where you can learn. Now back to the plywood. Well, what did I use for kind of wood material? This is actually pine and I didn't understand that there was a difference between pine and other woods. But if you can watch at the annual rings here, they are quite visible and you can actually, actually see them in your painting. If you buy some kind of nicer pieces of wood to paint on, they're mostly done, done with birch. And birch is much smoother and you cannot see the annual rings. So that is the biggest difference. But if you're going to do a painting with a lot of texture, it doesn't matter. So choose wisely, choose what you need and understand that there's a difference on wood and wood. And the second thing to think about is how to hang your painting. If you're using just this flat plywood, it's hard to hang it on the wall. You can be creative, you can maybe glue a hook on the back side and maybe something like that and or put it in a frame. Floater frames are very popular, you can buy them or you can create them yourself. But if you like something to be a little bit more fancy, the plywood it's out of the way and you want to do this. It's called a cradle panel. The big difference is this back side, if you can see it. Here you can put a wire on it so you can hang it on the wall. And um, you can also paint the sides and make it nicer. As you can see, the 
plywood itself can get warped with time if it's big enough and so. So this back frame also prevents the plywood from warping and you can do this by yourself. You're a little bit handy but I am lazy and my carpenter hubby doesn't like to do this on his spare time. So I want to buy these panels and here is an issue. I live in Sweden as you may know and I can't buy these anywhere. So I have to buy them from England, from Jackson Art. Jackson Art is a great site. I have it on my list and everybody who's living in Europe can order from there. And I know that in America there's no problem to buying these cradle panels and elsewhere in the world, ah sorry, I can't answer where you can find them. And here I just want to show you another painting I made. And uh, this one you can see that there's some dried grass nip, also from my garden again, and something else. Let's show you really close here. If you can see those bubbles, or what to call them, that is shellac burn. That is so sweet, but unfortunately nothing I will show in this course, it will be my extra course because it's, well, it's a little bit tricky to use it. But I want to show you a different painting. I was lucky enough to find this kind of panels at a discount, so I buy a lot of them. They are made of MDF board and you can use that as well. So some people are a little bit worried that they contain glues that can be unhealthy, but I think it's so small amount, so don't care about that. And look at the surface of this painting. Mm, I really, really love it. And the back side, I have done the wiring nice and also put on an information sheet about me and my art and painted the sides. This is how you want a painting when you want to give it away or sell it, of course. Your art is your brand, remember that. You are what you are doing and what you are showing. Well, I think this was all for this time. See you later.